unicorns to larger brands. Everyone today is looking to cash in on the next set of customers, Bharat. Let's take a closer look at what tier 2 and tier 3 consumers really want and understand from successful brands the data science behind winning the Bharat consumer. I would like to invite Satyajit Sen, Head Product and Community, ET Brand Equity, to moderate the next panel discussion on the topic, Decoding the Bharat Opportunity for Brands. It's my pleasure to invite the esteemed guest, Ajit Varghese, Chief Commercial Officer, Share Chat and Monch, Rajiv Dubey, Head of Media, Tabar India, Megha Agarwal, Head of Growth, Me Show. Welcome everyone. Over to you, Satyajit. Hi everyone, welcome to this session on decoding the Bharat opportunity for brands. As you all know, it will be an understatement to say that the concept of Bharat is emerging. For a while now, brands have been trying to uh, decode the needs and aspirations of the new set of consumers and trying to understand the dynamics of a market that is powered by the democratization of technology. This new Bharat has led to a change in the perception of the nation that marketeers once held. The well-informed audience today can utilize the rapid technological changes and developments to their utmost advantages. From unicorns to larger brands, everyone today is looking to cash in on the next set of consumers that lie in the Bharat. In this session today, I'm joined by industry experts uh, who would help us take a closer look at what tier two and tier three consumers really want and understand from the successful brands that data, what data science uh, goes behind winning the Bharat consumer. It's my great honor to introduce my esteemed panelists today. Uh, welcoming Megha Agarwal, Vice President and General Manager, User Growth at Misho. Welcome, Megha. Next, Hi, I have, everyone. Next, I have Mr. Rajiv Dubey, Head of Media at Dabur India. Welcome, Rajiv. Hi. And then I have Mr. Ajit Varghese, Chief Commercial Officer, Share Chat and Monch. Welcome, Ajit. So first of all, uh, I would like to thank my uh, panelists here uh, for joining us today and you know helping us take a closer look at uh, what the Bharat actually means for uh, brands and businesses. Uh, so Ajit, I'll start with you. Uh, we're talking about Bharat here, the Bharat market, the un market. Right. So let us uh, begin the session with an attempt to understand uh, who this Bharat consumer is and, you know, uh, what are his consumption patterns when it comes to digital platforms and what are the kind of content and what are the kind of, you know, formats he's uh, typically engaging with, if you can give us a, you know, uh, a deep dive into that. So first and foremost, I would love to say that we are earlier today, we actually launched the Bharat online report a joint study that we had done with Group M. Uh, to exactly answer the questions that you're looking for, you know, what is the, what is this Bharat audience and how is their online behavior? What are the consumption patterns and how how is it kind of different or similar to the, uh, the audiences that we know who are already online and interacting over the last one decade, right? Uh, that's something that is already available, uh, will be available today. Uh, I would say, how do you define this audience? Uh, let me first put a context of saying, I believe that 90% of Indian audience, you know, identify with their language. And that's something that is, we have seen over, I mean, we know this fact, but the online has created that, you know, divide between what has happened over the last decade versus last has happened on the last five years. If you look at from 2005 to 2015, what we have seen is the audiences which came online or internet connected to the global platforms are predominantly English. I mean, we call this audiences roughly around 200 odd million audiences till around 2015. And of that around 120 odd million was active on social, right? So that's that. But with the emergence of 4G in the last five years, what we have seen is the is the connection of India or Bharat that we talk about with you know diverse population, diverse taste, diverse interest groups, all connected now to the mainline internet ecosystem. And you would have seen the internet penetration going from almost 200 million to 650 million. The social media penetration has moved from almost 
120 million to almost 450 million audiences in, in, till 2020. So what has happened over this period is that you know a new set, diverse set of audiences have come into being, and who are who are also identified with their language, not necessarily English, and that has opened up this whole uh, you know uh, the content behavior, what we used to call as uh, as a dark web consumption or con uh, you know trends trends which we were not able to capture are not tagged at all suddenly started becoming uh, mainstream and to meet those the the new audiences which have come and it has almost quadrupled in the last five years we are calling that as the bharat audience and 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 if you look at that entire ecosystem it is diverse it is something that has uh, come up only recently what we have also seen is what are the emerging consumption patterns i would put it in actually three buckets one is this emergence of new form of entertainment the second is the new form of commerce or new way of dealing with our daily requirements earlier we only used to have utility utility on internet now everything that is on retail everything that is available outside we go outside for is available online that's one and third is the power of influencers is, is moving from a, from a very very macro influencer celebrity led influencers to actually grassroots level influencers to me these are the three three areas largely the form of entertainment uh, the form of uh, commerce and the form of uh, influence has moved uh, moved drastically in the especially in the last two years right uh, thanks did thanks for you know giving us a, a deep dive into understanding what the consumers are looking at i would connect this question i mean you know your answer to my next question to rajiv here Rajiv was a brand owner, right? Uh, so, so Ajit just, just mentioned about the democratization of technology with the, with the you know, uh, coming up of 4G and uh, the new tastes that have really, you know, emerged uh, as far as the Bharat consumer is concerned, right? So you are a brand owner here, here and when you are, uh, you know, going about planning the media spends uh, for your brand, uh, how do you look at the Bharat audience? What are the data sets that you really, you know, uh, refer to when it comes to uh, capturing the mindset in that area? So, you know, uh, the, I mean, first of all, the whole country is Bharat, actually, you know, uh, we, this, this is a part which is India, but most of the country is Bharat, uh, deep rooted. Uh, and that's, that's uh, uh, so uh, visible, you know, uh, if you look at the kind of searches which happen on internet uh, right now, you know, if you look at the searches which are happening is they're all, all driven by voice right now, right? you know, searches are voice voice uh, driven searches uh, there are uh, uh, the growth uh, which is happening actually in internet uh, nowadays is happening in rural you know rural is growing at a CAGR of almost 28% you know, versus say uh, just about 12 13% in urban areas right now uh, look at uh, uh, the total number of people who have access to youtube you know uh, the video uh, platform in rural areas like almost uh, as per youtube now it's like 222 million uh, right now uh, the smartphone usage in rural areas has become is, is growing at a very very fast pace, which is basically leading to uh, consumption of uh, video content, uh, then social, and then e-commerce. If you look at, for example, e-commerce has grown by about almost fifty-five percent in, uh, in the country, and mostly in, driven by rural. You know, so all this is driving towards the growth uh, uh, of, of of the medium, and and you know, again, uh, social commerce. You know, social commerce is. Something uh, which existed in this country forever, you know, and we've given a very fancy name to it now, but it existed in this country, and uh, so this is uh, this is basically leading to uh, a massive growth in uh, rural tier two, tier three towns, and uh, uh, I would not say urban is saturating. I mean, it's still sixty seven percent uh, almost, and uh, uh, growing, uh, catching up with the rest of the world, but huge growth opportunities, and you know, that's where one uh, has to market in future, you know, one, that's the future uh, of uh, uh, commerce, that's the future of e-commerce, that's the uh, future of uh, social commerce. And that's how uh, brands like us, we are looking at uh, this audience and looking at uh, 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 targeting these people and retargeting these people in this. Yes. You know, I'll connect your uh, answer here to uh, my next question to Mega because, you know, we're talking about the growth of uh, digital commerce as a category. And, uh, you know, uh, Mega, I read your, uh, I read Michaud's, uh, you know, latest report where you are saying that, you know, 71% of your growth, uh, you know, came from tier three cities, right, you know, and in the digital commerce category. 
so give us a you know uh, an insight into uh, the I mean the factors that really fueled this growth right and uh, what are the kind of areas and geographies that you really uh, looked at uh, while you know expanding your services there and uh, what what's the what's the mantra basically to crack that audience uh maybe i'll just take a one minute before i get to the question to really explain what misho also does um so misho at this point of time is one of the largest internet commerce companies uh in india our mission is to democratize e-commerce for entire bharat india whichever way we want to put it um if i was to talk about goal um it's it's how do we serve the needs aspirations of the next 1 billion population of india that is just about coming online and that's why in that uh, within the circumference of that mission and vision uh we've started penetrating much deeper into non metro cities and that's why you see almost 70% of our new users coming from tier 3 plus talking about the framework i will divide into three parts um the first is the product the product the core product offering which means the assortment we have the price point at which we are providing it as well as the app through which people buy this product second is communications i think that ties in with a little bit of with what ajit also mentioned but i'll i'll double click in a minute communications is how do we reach out to this user to get them on our platform and third is how do we distribute that communications how do we get to them in the most salient way possible what are those mediums what are those faces that take the message to them so let me just double click into each of the elements the first is the product as i mentioned if you look at the tg that misho is serving it's a fairly price conscious or a value conscious tg it's a tg that wants to get maximum out of whatever money they are spending and hence misho has been actually taking a lot of structural initiatives to ensure that we remove all the inefficiencies from the cost or the supply chain that we have and pass that as price benefit to our end user we've taken multiple initiatives one of the example is the 0% commission for suppliers it we were pioneers uh, in making that happen for the suppliers the second is assortment if you look at bharat um 80 85% of what we consume is actually still an unorganized sector misho was the first company uh, first e-commerce company that solely focused on digitizing this supply and getting it online so that we are able to solve for access problem for this entire tg third is the app um the app that we've built is very lightweight it's extremely simple and intuitive to understand so that people who are coming online for the first time they are actually able to navigate through it discover products and actually buy them as well so that's the product second is communications i think that very much ties in with what ajit mentioned uh this tg the way you have to communicate is in a way that resonates with them which means fully vernacular right as he mentioned 90% of people actually prefer their own language and not so much english so fully vernacular second highly visual this tg consumes more visual than just textual way third in a very personalized sort of a manner which is where the whole ai data science actually starts to kick in what is personalization mean in communication one example is if we are talking to a person in karnataka we would pick up products which are actually selling in karnataka and show it to them instead of having very generic creatives right so that's the example third is the mediums and the faces that we are using to reach out to them again as i think ajit mentioned this point too that what is trending now is um people need faces which are relatable and therefore it's very important that you reach out these communications through influencers but which are micro and nano in size and not like very large similarly a lot of things misho has done to ensure that our content uh, we are getting deeply integrated into native content so to summarize there are three things uh, or the three step framework to ensure that we have been able to penetrate in bharat is first is our core product making it much stronger which is right assortment at right price through an app which is super intuitive and easy to understand second tenex and communications which means relatable communications vernac visual personalized and last is the mediums that we reach which is through influencers through local content etc
So that's how I would say. Right, right. Thanks, Mega. I'll come to Ajit here. Ajit, we you know we heard Mega mention about uh, the formats, right? The formats of content that uh, Bharat is consuming, and then obviously you know uh, the mediums that uh, they are uh, hooked to more. So as a platform, right? Uh, as a platform that is you know uh, that has a great reach in the among the Bharat audience. Uh, how, you know, how do you see this uh, debate of uh, you know, uh, video versus text versus native, you know, going and, you know, uh, what's your uh, assessment for brands? What can brands do best in, uh, in, in regards to, you know, reaching out to the audience effectively? I think it's absolutely bang on what Mega just said. I mean, surge of video is, is, is quite apparent, right? I mean, what you've seen in last five years, the text versus video, text has moved from 80% down to almost less than is in single digit consumption today whereas video from a from a 10 percent has moved to 80 percent consumption right so that's that's quite apparent i think what is what is slightly different is over the i mean i, I would just enlarge the period over the last three decades see video consumption has started in india ever since tv came in it's just that it was in long format right it is two hour format three hour format one hour format right but ever since that has happened over the last three decades the formats have only grown smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, is it to do with attention span? Is it to do with proliferation of content? Is it to do with more, more things available? Stuff like that. We can always debate that, right? But over the, over the years, video consumption, what we have seen is that due to lower attention span, it has, this, it has all come to short, short video space, right? Now, I'm not saying long form doesn't have its space. Long form has its space. But I think what people are frequently doing is, is going into short video space. So that's that's one thing that we have seen. And I, I think that's one advice that I, I give to advertisers or marketers, everybody, is that while long format has its, has its benefits, but there is a whole plethora of short form that you could do to engage with the audience in a very, um, you know, discoverable way or, or you, what you call is snacking way. And you could tell your story in multiple ways and to engage rather than just one way to engage. So that's, that's probably one thing that we have seen and our whole ecosystem, whether it is share chat or whether it's merge is actually tuned into, uh, into catering this space, especially, uh, if you look at the younger age group and the middle age group, this is this is where the phenomenon we are we are growing rampantly. The other bit, I think, I'll I'll just build on what Megal said is is this whole personalization. And I think uh, what we have been used to is what is trending among popular conju or popular set of people in the internet audience. We used to think that's what is trending. Versus today, we know it's all cohorts, right? Different audiences have different race, geographies, location, uh, interest group. So how, how are you able to personalize not just with the demographic and other metrics, but based on interest and social graphs? So that's another phenomenon. And that's where AI has come in, right? So I think the ability to personalize as granular as possible, and therefore reach out to different sets of people in, in their interest group. So that's, that's again, a huge phenomenon. And it has a, it has a lot of impact on creativity, the way we communicate, uh, the, the number of uh, things that we, a brand has to do today to engage with multitude of audiences versus in the TV old TV era where we put one 30 second row, one format, and we expect over a three to six month period, it, it, it keeps on registering to the audiences, right? Today, people don't have that patience or the fatigue sets in very fast. Uh, it's, like the, uh, it's like the dialogue that we have in, in older era, movies used to run for eight months, six months, right? Today, movies run for two weeks or maybe even one week, right? Similar, con the content, the traction of a piece of content is so limited, like it, it, it can set, the fatigue gets set in very, very, very fast. So our ability to think engagement with our audience has has grown up multitude the third bit that i see is this is related to this is this whole discovery i think what have, what we have seen over the last 3 years or maybe especially during the covid because covid came in and probably we have seen something that could have happened in 5 years and probably happened in 2 years right uh, this this innate hunger of audiences for new content and 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 probably it's related to the old point of saying you know fatigue sets in faster and, and your ability to therefore give them new pieces of content or new way of influence has, has grown immensely. I think, you know, people just keep moving on. And if it, if it is tried and tested, they want something new. They want constantly new. And I, I think one of the biggest challenges of algorithms today is to almost predict 
what do you what are you, what is your future consumption pattern and a lot of global app ecosystem which has emerged over the last 5 years and including ours is investing a lot in this space to see what is the future future piece of content that a, a set of group or a cohort would like and therefore get that engagement going both both at a user level and at for a brand level. right right that's a great uh, you know uh, input actually uh, so when you when you really speak about uh, the changing patterns in content so evolution is the only constant i can you know uh, imagine because and that evolution is being uh, you know uh, driven by the consumption patterns uh, especially in the those regions so i'll come to rajiv here rajiv uh, we have been discussing about this debate of uh, you know video versus text versus uh, content formats uh, you know long form short form as a yeah. brand owner right what kind of you know uh, vehicles out of these vehicles that we have uh, you know uh, discussed about uh, do you choose as the right fit to reach out to that or audience that you mentioned about in the in the first phase when you mentioned about the rural audience the tier tier 2 tier 3 city audience or as a brand owner what's your take about uh, what are they consuming and you know what are the uh, best possible formats they are uh, kind of you know engaging with so uh, so you know the first of all uh, uh, one like uh, as an advertiser you know one tends to go after the eyeballs you know that's that's the first uh, uh, thing you know so wherever there is a viewership there wherever there wherever there is a traction wherever there is a uh, chance of meeting our uh, uh, audiences so that we can target our ads so that's the that's the first thing so so wherever they are so what becomes easier for us is that you know the video content uh, be it a uh, a uh, long format which is which used to be like like what ajit said uh, two and a half hour movie uh, uh, back to those days of doordarshan when used to wait for one sunday movie uh, which used to be once in a week to today where you know there's a short uh, format uh, content like uh, ajit's platform on uh, moj and, uh, and snapchat etc uh, so th- that kind of uh, format that's something uh, uh, very very compelling uh, and uh, you can target audiences the younger audiences are Uh, definitely there and even older ones are getting there uh, in a while uh, so uh, so video always uh, is is a first uh, port of call if you but to target your advertising that's uh, easier uh, uh, way of uh, reaching people because you know most people are consuming entertainment uh, as a, as a first uh, 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 this thing you know uh, in, in the media so entertainment uh, in this in a video format then followed by that is uh, text and uh, then again the news is again another form of entertainment in this country so in whichever format news is presented be it television uh, be it uh, uh, on news apps or be it uh, say on uh, the consumption of news happens on say uh, platform like youtube and connected tv as well so the, those formats so primarily video i would say that you know we we, we target primarily on video uh, rather than uh, other formats because that's uh, uh, growing much faster Younger audiences are there, and there all formats of uh, consumption happens in that. Correct, and you know I would uh, resonate with you because I have seen a lot of you know uh, interesting videos coming out of uh, Dower's uh, stable, you know, off late, and you know it just resonates. So you know uh, I'll come to Mega here, Mega. You know we are talking about the Bharat audience, Bharat consumer here, right? Mm, you as a digital commerce platform, uh, the first thing that comes in a brand's mind when they are going to penetrate any market is to decipher uh, the uh, aspiration level and the spending powers of that of that uh, you know uh, audience or cu- customer set uh, you as a digital digital uh, commerce player what do you uh, assess about uh, the aspiration levels and the uh, you know uh, spending power of that segment of audience sure i think there my pov is that in general india is a very aspirational country uh, irrespective of which income segment we are in all of us want to move up in life so i think there is one area which uh, where non metro is actually very very similar to metro plus with the proliferation of uh, smartphones and penetrations of internet these aspirations have only been fueled um opportunities have increased and therefore disposable incomes all of those have naturally increased and therefore in terms of aspirations and deep pockets i think it's there 
Now, even when you look at from numbers perspective, there are about 600 or 650 million people in India who have an access to smartphone as well as internet connectivity. Barely 10% of that is metro. The rest 90% is non-metro. So to be able to crack this segment is what's going to fuel the growth of digital commerce, to be honest. And that's exactly where I think where Misho's focus has been to solve for this 90% as their primary objective and not so much for a metro user per se. Uh, correct. Uh, Ajit, when you uh, decide about, you know, uh, uh, I mean, you know, we speak, we speak about content formats uh, and, you know, engagement formats in that area. Uh, what's your real assessment about the Bharat audience when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, spending power as well as aspiration levels? Um, if, if you, I mean, I think Mega touched upon a beautiful point about uh, the aspiration and we, I mean, all developing ep- economies like uh, rack to riches story, right? And and that's a that's that's a constant phenomenon in all developing economies. I'll add maybe one or two other points that probably, w- you know, will will put the context to this. I think what we, if you look at India's growth in the last ten or fifteen or twenty years that you have seen, it's mostly driven by the top 100, 150 million people, right? People the po- people with dispensable income power, right? And and uh, you know, disproportionate income power, right? And India's growth story has been pretty much in the last two decades. But if if any of us in this room or outside believes that there is a next phase of India's growth in the next decade or two decades has to come from the next, rest 90%, right? right. The, so the Bharat, the Bharat or the what we call as language audiences is, is one which is going to power India's growth, right? Now, two things actually hindered them in terms of one is access and the other is finance. I think both of these are getting solved as we speak, right? One is the the accessibility infrastructure that's no longer a hindrance today. I mean, uh, and that, like like we said about it, whether it's about four G, tomorrow five G will come in, or the smartphones, uh, finance available easily, finance able to do finance at on a fingertip. So those two those two things getting as and as and when we get solved. This this becomes an easy easy solve for the rest ninety percent of our, of India. So that's that's our real growth story. Because it's not as if they didn't have the money, but they just didn't have the uh, or they didn't like content. It's just that we didn't discover that potential, or or it was probably hidden, or it was probably access was a problem. I so to me that those three things getting solved em- makes the makes this audience emerge access. Give, make sure that they can express in the language that they prefer and gives us the ability to connect in a form that they would like to be connected with rather than what we think how we can connect with them so that's that's a big distinction and i think in the in the entire ecosystem whether whether you look at all forms of media if you look at um, bollywood you look at um, you look at uh, celebrity space you look at sports uh, the the big indian passions i think those some of those things will continue right these are these are the, we, we all need a hero we all need a we, we, big look out for but i think what is the other big thing that is coming out i think mega briefly touched upon is the power of influence the power of influence moving into micro influencers nano influencers going to regional influencers people whom you can relate to and we see that traction currently right there are there are there are brand advertising then we sometimes do creator uh, creator led advertising which are normal creators creating an ad and we almost see two two to three times clicks moving up because it's a creator ad not a brand ad no, a celebrity ad and stuff like that now this could be early early numbers i don't know to form a trend here but we we can see huge traction when we do influencer marketing uh, and then, and some of the brands which have come in early to, to share chat and more are already adapting to these formats. We are we are seeing huge traction when we do a hashtag challenge to engage with brands and people creating videos on their own and engaging organically with the brand. So there is a huge new new ways of working uh, with the audiences to engage with them in a, in a in a form that they like. And I would say this is still emerging. Uh, for example, um, in China, uh, video commerce is huge, right? I mean, over the last decade. Now we are saying almost some in some places almost ten to twenty percent of the, of e, GMV of e-commerce companies is actually mm-hmm. coming through uh, video commerce, right? And that's something that we are starting today. It's in the beta phase today, uh, but you know, using influencers to start propagating uh, brands usage 
and how do you create a funnel from there on to get to into a marketplace and fulfill that fulfill that journey and that's something that we are we are going to bet hugely in the next 2 3 years because we believe that this can definitely play a big role in opening up the commerce for bharat right uh this this brings me to uh, rajiv as we as we come to an end uh, towards the end of this discussion so rajiv i really want to uh, want to understand from you you know uh, so adit just mentioned about what the future is going to be when it when it when it when it comes to the bharat audience and you know uh, the growth of uh, the evolution of uh, content uh, that they are uh, that they're really looking at so yeah. uh, as a media owner right or, or or sorry you as a you as a brand owner uh, what do you see uh, the evolution going in terms of media consumption when it comes to the bharat audience so you know uh, so i mean uh, ajit talked about influencers and uh, so did bigat so i just wanted to touch upon that point uh, first you know so uh, so what is that uh, the way influencers uh, are uh, getting used nowadays i mean companies like ours you know so brands like ours which used to have probably have only one commercial uh, uh, at at uh, for a brand you know once upon a time which used to run uh, which used to be dubbed in different languages and used to run across the country now that has changed now you know what happens is that you know uh, so one is that uh, local uh, influencers nano influencers uh, uh, are are taking part in and even you know the the uh, at a local level say or a state level the big influencers and uh, so so influencers becoming a very very big thing in our ecosystem as well which is uh, basically uh, letting people uh, have a better uh, uh, attachment with the brand i mean they talk in their language and they you know they, they talk in their lingo etc so that's something uh, uh, becoming very very strong and in the long run that's what uh, uh, is helping us uh, uh, grow and and uh, is basically the fueling growth uh, brands like you know uh, i'll give you example of brand like honey dabar honey you know for example dabar honey is a brand which is basically uh, which is sold all, all over the country we have uh, i mean imagine uh, uh, for brand like dabar honey we have films in virtually all uh, languages like in telugu you will have a, a different superstar uh, working for for the brand you have in, in tamil we have different one in bengali we have different one in the heartland we have you have several of them and plus on top of that uh, uh, various uh, uh, influencers in uh, and nano influencers and city level influencers so so that's uh, uh, that's something uh, uh, giving uh, us opportunity to explore new markets and uh, and trying to uh, drive uh, growth over there one is that second is that you know uh, you know there has to be a, a huge void in uh, markets like up and bihar and despite the uh, proliferation of tv all across the country these markets somehow you know just stagnated at a certain level of 50% bihar is still like about 23% uh, tv penetration but look at what uh, uh, internet and what jio and what uh, uh, you know growth of internet has done in these markets uh, a larger population have access to internet rather than having the uh, access to tv right now so so these are the uh, growth opportunities for us i mean these are the growth opportunities for us where if you can reach your products to them and uh, you can sell it to them directly uh, direct to customer kind of approach that's something uh, is 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 going to help us in a big way so so these markets i mean like uh, uh, in our in our system uh, there is a there is something called as abc of dabar you know which is basically ara baliya chapra of uh, of india you know which is the two tier three towns is how it is referred to but if you look at this abc uh, so that's basically defines uh, whole uh, uh, the future of business uh, uh, for companies like ours and you know uh, and the where people uh, the new people will come from new audiences will come from a uh, bit about the distribution of uh, our company is uh, if you look at the distribution of the of of a brand like dabar is in almost 66 lakh outlets in the country you know which is second only to uh, uh, to to leave us you know and uh, uh, much more i mean we are we are say in uh, say in this up bihar and p uh, rajasthan kind of markets we are we are like leaders in in most of, most of these markets so uh, a ground level distribution uh, along with uh, influencer led uh, marketing and uh, along with say uh, uh, targeting on uh, say the areas which were so called media dark areas a combination of these factors uh, is is where which is going to fuel the growth for uh, companies like ours and you know even the uh, the new commerce companies uh, as well you know 
Correct. I think you know you mentioned it correctly. You know uh, that segment, and you know uh, is going to be the uh, growth area for all businesses, and indeed that that would be. And we are already seeing a lot of interest from uh, businesses across uh, segments and across categories, uh, looking to penetrate to the region that we really call Bharat. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are really really running out of time today. Uh, I wish we had uh, some more time and to discuss about. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and understand uh, more deeply what brands really need to crack, uh, you know, uh, in this market. But uh, so far, it has been, a, you know, a great round of discussions. Uh, we have learned a lot of understanding the Bharat audience and uh, what they're cons consuming currently and what the future uh, looks like and the evolution looks like for brands. Uh, on behalf of VT Brand Equity, I really want to uh, thank all my panelists here, uh, Megha, Ajit, and Rajiv. Thank you so much for joining us today and helping us and our audiences you know, take them you know, through the journey of uh, brands and Bharat. Uh, until next time, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for putting your point of view. Truly very valid points made with detailed explanation. Now we'll proceed to the next chat session. Meanwhile, a reminder to explore the expo area for interesting videos and presentations.